This episode of Blacktop Banter is brought to you by Craftco, the world's leading manufacturer of packaged pavement preservation materials and equipment for the asphalt industry. Learn more at craftco.com. All right, welcome back to Blacktop Banter. If you followed us along recently at all, you found that we have found ourselves at awesome sports car courses and race courses across the country, uh, which is fantastic. We thoroughly enjoy going to those events and uh, being around the loud motors and squealing tires and fast speed and hot dogs and, you know, T-shirts with your favorite people on them from time to time. But what we do encounter from time to time are people who enjoy the exact same thing, who are doing kind of what we're doing as well. And we had the great fortunate time to meet Taylor Kitchen at uh, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course when we were there uh, sponsoring Spencer Boyd and attending that race. Taylor uh, has a wonderful podcast of her own. We think it's a fantastic creator, and it was very firmly implanted in our brains that we would love to have a conversation with her out here on Blacktop Banter. So she joins us today. Taylor, please introduce yourself to the listenership. Well, first off, thank you for having me on the show. I'm very excited. I've been following the TikTok page for a little bit. Love the content there. Uh, thank you. But my name is Taylor. Uh, I got into motorsports probably around 2016 is when I fought, watched my first race. And 2017, I went to my first race in person with my grandma and I got hooked right away. And uh, <laughs> I went to college to study journalism, broadcast journalism, and my minor was oh, okay. in um, yeah, sports issues and um, media management. So it all kind of folds together nicely just to create wow. what I'm doing now. So, Wow, that's cool. I, yeah, I didn't realize that. that uh, I kind of thought maybe you had my perspective of it where, yep, I'm a fan. Yes, I'm curious. Yes, I want to do this as far as following along and have interest in it. And it just so happens to be that I'm going to make a podcast about it. Actually, you kind of developed a background for this scenario already, and it happened to have a serendipitous chance of falling into what you do. Yeah, and what's funny is when I started college, I changed my major three or four times. I was not decisive on all at all of what I wanted to do. I started as a film production major, I wanted to tell stories. I just didn't know where that fell in. And I already had a love of NASCAR before I decided to go that route. And as I went through college and I kept meeting with my advisors and everything like that, I was like, you know, film doesn't really fit. An English major doesn't really quite fit. So what do I do? And uh, our school, I went to Bowling Green State University up in Bowling Green, Ohio. And uh, I walked into our media building one day and um, one of the professors showed me around. They had like a studio with a green screen and everything like that. And my eyes were like, oh my gosh, like my eyes widened. And I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be doing something like this. And uh, from there, I, I think at that point I was like, okay, I, I got to go the journalism route. I have to go the media route. And, uh, you know, COVID hit and I had gotten pretty sick and I, um, I uh, went home in 2019, then COVID and things, and I was looking for something to do. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. I don't have a direction. And a lot of it was, I want to talk about the sport with people, like a bigger community than what I had in my hometown. And so I started my brand yep. at that point, and then everything folded together. The the journalism, the storytelling, the, the major that I had finally landed on, and the love of NASCAR. <laughs> wow. That was a crazy story. You never know how things are going to work out, Taylor. Like, you don't. <laughs> you, you think you think you have a you think you have a picture, right? And just so you know, uh, I'm 37. I still don't know my life's direction, so it's totally cool, okay. totally fine, just to <laughs> to live in the moment and do it. Apparently, we're doing what we think we're supposed to be doing here, and it's we're having a lot of fun. So uh, we can't complain there too much at all. Um, I I would really enjoy you elaborating so a little bit on how you had time, effort, and energy to build the brand um, and make it into what it is already in the short amount of time because Blacktop Banner has taken me a long time to build um, and it transformed from just social media videos from my business into this and different things and to what it's doing now. Um, what did that look like for you as far as how you were able to do that? 
Well, when I started off the show, I didn't know how I wanted it to look. I just knew I wanted to talk. So I literally just had my phone and I recorded on voice memos, my voice talking about NASCAR. And I look back at my first episodes that I did often, there was no video with it. And I cringe all the time just because my camera presence was <laughs> not there. Or the, my voice presence wasn't there. And I, I was nervous, right? Because you're starting something new and yeah. you're like, I don't know what this is going to turn into, but I hope it sticks. And as I kept recording episodes, I was like, okay, these are the segments I want. This is what I want to talk about. This is the audience I want to reach. And for me, as a newer fan who has not been a lifelong fan of the sport, like so many others that make content about NASCAR, it was how do I attach myself to this community and how do I bring in that new audience? Kind of digestible content about the sport that it's easy to understand and easy to catch on to. So I started building that, and then at some at some point I decided to get out a 2012 DSLR Canon camera, uh, horrible nice. video quality, but <laughs> I was like, I want to try to like put in video. I knew how to edit, and it was a challenge for myself. And I said, okay, this is the next step. Let's take it. So we took the next step. I kept using my phone for audio, and uh, I started getting guests on the show, and I just kept building and building. And then I went to live streams, and then it really was just a hobby, and it's so easy, and I'm sure you can agree with this, but it's easy to do something and put the effort into it and the passion into it when you are passionate about it when you feel strongly yes. about something and i felt i found myself in doing this and connecting to an audience and um really just being a presence in the community and being a different presence in the community and then i guess somehow that was picked up on in 2022 in april uh, toby christie from tobychristie.com a great motorsports media outlet that i had followed for years to get nascar news and just in general he reached out to me on twitter via dm and he was like hey uh this is my cell phone number call me and i was like oh my gosh okay it's the toby christie trying to call <laughs> me and we're, we're gonna have a discussion i don't know what it's about <laughs> And right. the discussion was, you know, we love your content and we want you to join the right. team. And that was a no brainer for me. Um, and from there I realized yeah. this is actually a career. And so it's just skyrocketed yeah. since then. Yeah. I think, I think you, you go into it right with, uh, the passion like you're speaking of, and that allows you to, it carries you a long way, right? Like it's super mm -hmm. fun. It's super exciting. Uh, even now, right, the conversation aspect of it and literally the creating part of it is still super exciting. Every time we step into the studio, it's a different conversation with a different person from a different perspective of life that went through different things. And it really makes it really cool. And the same aspect of it, similar to NASCAR, Asphalt has a lot of different variables, a lot of different sections and gamuts that you can talk about, which makes it really interesting to us. But NASCAR racing and uh, motorsport in general is the same exact thing. Like there's so many different gamuts and all types of – even the NASCAR branded series, um, the, th the three different series, four different series, they all have different perspectives and different racers who have different personalities. And it, it really makes it really cool when you come down to that. The, the thing that we find here about our guest is that a lot of times they have unique stories, same as the racers have unique stories. You know, we both have a mutual friend and – uh, Spencer Boyd, who has a different story than our friend Ben Rhodes has, who uh, has a different story. And it really makes everything unique. What what really struck me was um, you speaking about uh, an affliction that you had with POTS that um, really allowed you to gain perspective on what you wanted to do and spend time. Would you be open to sharing that with us? Absolutely. Yeah. And I appreciate having the platform to do this and I'm asked about it a lot or I people DM me about it or are like, hey, I have a family friend that might have this. Can you explain it? So having a platform to do that for me is so important and I've tried to use my platform to explain it. But basically what POTS is, it's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is a mouthful. But basically what it means in short is whenever I change positions, if I'm laying down to sitting up or if I'm standing, my blood pressure will either have a huge drop or increase quite a bit and my heart rate will increase and uh, by like 30 beats per minute or over and it'll sustain wow. it. And that's pretty uncomfortable. And yeah. POTS is under that umbrella of an um, auton uh, autonomic nervous system disease and okay. or it's known as dysautonomia. And essentially mm -hmm. what POTS has done for me, it has dysregulated my autonomic nervous system by a landslide. So things that would come easy to other people, regulating the heart rate, um, regulating blood pressure, um, being good in heat, especially, or um, being able to tolerate exercises or something like that. Like I can't do that that well. 
And wow. when I was first trying to get diagnosed, it messed up my stomach, um, my sleep. There's so many other things I have going on with it as well, like fibromyalgia and sleep apnea and all these other things that have just morphed Jeez. into this. And it got to a point where 2019, I was going into my sophomore year of college and I knew I was getting sick. I was in and out of like the ER. I was in and out of everything that your doctor's appointments and nobody could figure out what was wrong. And mm. uh, the start of that semester, literally, I, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get out of my dorm room. And I was trying to walk to class and I would have to sit on the ground because I, I couldn't wow. move. And every time I tried to move, I felt like I was going to pass out. So oh I ended up gosh, medically with drawing yeah it's medically withdrawing from that and we went on this journey of trying to get a diagnosis and it, it took a long time i became incredibly unhealthy i lost a lot of weight because i i couldn't eat and it was it wasn't until 2020 um i believe it was september of that month or october is when i officially got a diagnosis of pots and um at that point i was like okay it's, it's the relief of getting a diagnosis and knowing what's wrong knowing you're not crazy and knowing that there yeah. is a way to help manage but there might not be a way to fix it there's no cure for pots it's something that you just manage mm -hmm. and deal with and luckily um, i have great help um, from my doctors at the cleveland clinic who have been able to you know get me on the right meds give me some of the right treatment plans that involves a lot of exercise and working your way back up to just being a little bit stronger again especially in your legs because a lot of what happens is your blood pools so i'll wear like compression socks to make sure i have good circulation or i'm just strengthening in that way a lot of it is some heat training as well like if over the yeah. summer i try to stay outside a lot so i can just get my body used to the heat and sometimes it goes well sometimes it does not uh, that's how it works. That's but, how it is for us in the heat too in the asphalt world, Taylor. Sometimes it goes well and sometimes yeah. it doesn't go very well <laughs> for sure. I was going to say for it sure. gets hot. And then, I mean, talking about it too, just the heat this summer has been like the worst I think it's ever oh, been, just in my opinion. Brutal. So, yeah. Uh, but from that, it was how do I get my life back? What can I do? Because, yes. you know, working the typical job is tough and school was tough and it's what what do i do at this time to give myself something back how do i take my life back and a lot yeah. of that was i want to talk to people i want to find a community nascar crazy like talking about it on twitter social media and i was like okay let's do something and i sat down at my kitchen table with my dad and we tried to come up with names for the show and we threw a lot of names around and i kept looking and i was like this name's taken this name's taken and my dad came up with the name above the yellow line and so mm -hmm. we, I used that in the next few days, I ended up putting out a show, but it, it was me trying to feel like, okay, I have this illness. We do not have a cure for it. It is tough and I still deal with it daily. And there's days where I'm good to go and yeah. I can manage it. And there's days where I cannot at all, but it's learning that this, the world isn't necessarily made with people with disabilities in mind a lot of the time. And yeah, it's sure. how do you fight that back? And so yep. with this platform, that's what I'm doing. Well, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job for for people who thank you very much for sharing that, by the way. Yeah. It's, I think that sometimes people will hear something um, and understand that it it is a affliction and they're like, OK, and it just passes on. Right. They like, yeah, I, something happens here, but they don't really go into detail or understand um, that is something that you deal with every day, right? There's a lot of, whether it's physical um, health or mental health or whatever it may be, you know, to find some kind of a baseline normal that you can function from and at least enjoy life, yes. uh, sometimes it's a struggle to get back to and get there, right? What I mm -hmm. think you have done is found a passion and a trajectory that aligns with um, that baseline that you found again. And you're like, taking it by the horns, which is fantastic for us to see and, and, and understand here at Blacktown Banter as well. The question I have for you, I know what it means, <clears throat> but the world might not know at large, and I'm sure NASCAR fans know what it means. Um, what does above the yellow line mean? Oh, great question. For me, it's a, it means a safe place for all fans of whatever race, gender, whatever, 
you you fall under, I guess. It's a place for everyone to talk about the sport that we love from any knowledge yeah. set. You could be a lifelong fan. You could have just joined the sport and watching it last week for all I care. It's a place yeah. where we can form a community of a, a positive community to talk about the sport. So it, it means safety to me, but it also just in general means just having a good time, you know, bringing that community together and positivity and lifting each other up. So it, that's, that's kind of what it means to me. Perfect. Perfect. For, for those of, uh, us that act that actually want to know like what the actual yellow line means in nascar or i'm pretty pretty sure it's just strictly nascar because i see indycar and f1 guys going all over and trying to cut corners and get penalized oh yeah um (laughs) the the yellow line in nascar obviously is the no-go zone right like Mm. we you and i i'm sure have watched some races where (laughs) they would be the greatest stories ever told if guys wouldn't have dipped below the yellow line Right. Um, our friend mm-hmm. Spencer Boyd has a great story about the yellow line. Right. Um, not him going below it, but him, you know, contributing to his success because of it. Um, it's very interesting. When we come back from commercial break, I want you to kind of tell us what um, above the yellow line covers. But for a minute here, for a couple minutes, we're going to take a word from our sponsors who allow this podcast to happen and a lot of different podcasts that you see us take care of as well as some other content. So. Stick with us. We're going to be back with Taylor Kitchen. She's going to explain to us a little bit more about about what the yellow line covers. Asphalt maintenance contractors. Winter's just around the corner, and we all know the harmful effects that colder months have on pavement. Here at Wiscoat, we've tried a lot of products. We keep coming back to Crapco because of their crack and joint sealers are the best in the industry. No matter the climate that you're located in, Crapco has products that will fit your needs. Find the full product lineup at Crafco.com. That's C-R-A-F-C-O dot com. Have you seen the smoothness and compaction that Dynapack's seismic technology has recently brought to the asphalt industry? It's incredible. And Dynapack's CC900G roller may just be the best roller on the market for driveway and parking lot paving contractors. It's even better than the little yellow one that you're used to seeing. But don't take my word for it. Give the CC900G a test run yourself by visiting Dynapack.com and finding a retailer near you. Say goodbye to potholes and roadway damage without the need for large crews, heavy equipment, or toxic chemicals. Aquafault is the only permanent repair material for asphalt and concrete that uses water. And installation is simple. Just pour, add water, and tamp. It's that easy. An Aquafault repair can be open to traffic immediately and fully sealed within 24 hours. Plus, the product is backed by a three-year warranty and is made in the USA. Visit Aquafault.com. That's A-Q-U-A. P-H-A-L-T dot com to learn more. I'm incredibly proud of the Blacktop Banner Edition seal coating unit produced in partnership with KM International and available now in both the 550 and 700 gallon versions. Custom built on the same frame as their bulletproof hot boxes, I work closely with KM to design what I believe is the best seal coating unit on the market. A unit designed by a contractor for contractors. See the entire walkthrough of the unit on Blacktop Banner's YouTube channel or visit kminternational.com to learn more and place your order. Since its inception, Dubuque Asphalt Maintenance has branded our trucks with the 1-800-BLACKTOP number from the 800 Pavement Network and consistently seen increases in leads and jobs completed. I know the 800 Pavement Network can do the same for your business. Visit 1-800-PAVEMENT.COM and get set up with your custom phone number today. All right, we're back. Uh, I would love to say I went and got a drink and uh, relaxed a little bit, but I didn't. I just stayed here and took a couple more notes because I have some more questions for Taylor. Uh, We're back here at Blacktop Banter. Uh, Everybody knows, if you're listening to this, more than likely what Blacktop Banter covers, um, which it seems to be, to me, is getting a little more pixelated as time goes on because uh, we're, you know, what are we doing at a NASCAR race? What are we doing at Road America? Um, you wouldn't have seen that a few years ago, a couple of years ago, maybe one year ago. But um, what we cover is far different than what Above the Yellow Line covers. What I enjoy thoroughly, uh, Taylor's program, is her social media content and posting. Uh, I really like the Above the Yellow Line picks before the weekend uh, of who you think. <laughs> I, there's always like a, a clear cut. Yeah, he's got a shot, but then there's a couple really good underdogs. We're like, yeah, man, we'd love to see them at least, you know, podium. We don't podium, but 
we'd love to see him podium at least. Um, tell us a little bit about Above the Yellow Line and what it covers. Yeah, we cover quite a bit. We stick mainly to the NASCAR Cup Series as it's the top series of stock car racing that NASCAR has to offer and I think the country has to offer. And really, we just focus on covering the news and my favorite thing to cover with it is, you know, the storylines. It's, um, are, is there silly season news? Drivers going to different places next season? Is there are contract negotiations coming up? Or it's, was there an incident at the track that, or this past weekend that NASCAR Cup Series went to Pocono in particular? And there was a lot of drama. So it's covering that drama, talking oh, about both sides. Or, yeah, we're talking about every side of the story and just, <laughs> you know, breaking it down. Not necessarily saying was somebody in the wrong, was somebody in the right, but it's what led to this and what is everyone saying. So it's making sure that the audience watching gets like a behind the scenes look at what goes on in those moments and what happens in the industry, right? So we covered that. Yeah. And then we also go on to do some more social media content. Um, myself, uh, I, I have a crew of, um, I have a great team, Adam, Dom, Ben, Brandon. Um, and uh, we we cover the sport and Rob, we cover the sport and we do those race picks that you see on our social media every week. And we, we've yep. come up with a pretty elaborate system on how that works. I cannot explain it to you <laughs> in under like five minutes, but uh, we Perfect. go through um, random picks each week that we think might have a good shot to win at the track. But uh, we expanded to do more social media content last year, like the TikToks and the race previews and uh, really taking advantage of like reels and shorts. So uh, we, that's a little bit yeah. of what we cover in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been using the picks of the casino. I'm not going to lie. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really uh, hasn't panned out yet, but I'm stink I'm st going to stick with yeah. it. I believe in y'all. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, my my son's now going to go to tech school instead of a four year. But you know, we got we got we got high hopes. We'll try to get him back yeah. up there. Uh, I actually think I actually think I did see the college you attended when I was on the interstate going back north towards Wisconsin, to the left with the big football stadium, kind of by the yes. main road. Was I right? You that okay, would be correct. Perfect. I thought I thought I put two and two together. All right, that happens once in a while. I didn't make it very far in math, but I still know two and two makes five, so that's not a problem <laughs> at all. Um, so we, we attended, talking about your content, sorry I got off track, uh, talking about your content and what you guys produced there at uh, Above the Yellow Line. You had a great piece with Ben Rhodes at the end of uh, Ohio when we were there, um, talking about a little bit of drama that was in between uh, you know, him. Uh, I love that stuff, right? Because we can, yes. we can see it, we understand, hey, something might have happened or whatever. And then when you get to these interviews and stuff that you do at the end, you get a whole different perspective. You're like, well, yeah, back on lap 20, he'd come into me around this corner, and then I guess he was still a little PO'd about it, and we go into the last corner before the straightaway and caught me in the tail end. Next thing I know, I'm in the sand. Whatever it is, what it is, he does it to me, yada, yada. There's a, a drama aspect to it and a script there that's unscripted, essentially, that you don't get a good perspective on until you get those types of interviews. One thing you and I were speaking about is the fact that Two or three years ago, we had no idea that we were going to be capable of doing what we're doing and speaking to these guys in person, right, back and forth. But um, mm -hmm. I think that it's a unique thing to get that perspective as well. Uh, what has been your favorite thing about covering NASCAR in person nowadays? For me, it's an adventure. I've been so lucky to go to the track and cover literally anything I want. And it, it could be talking to the drivers. It could be writing stories, video interviews. It could even be photography. That's something I'm trying to learn a little bit more about and I'm taking a shot at. Uh, we're, we're learning it, trust me, we're learning it. But it's the fact that you can go to the track and you never know who you're gonna talk to. So it is the same thing that you were mm -hmm. mentioning. And like, I got to talk to like Matt DiBenedetto, Connor Daly. Uh, it's like, you don't know who you're gonna interact with. And then too, one of my favorite parts is when those interactions turn into just more, just, just calmer conversations genuine, about life than, yeah genuine conversation yeah, genuine. Yep. yeah and you get to learn about these drivers a little bit more than just the car setup or what makes you nervous about mid-ohio or the rain it's you get to learn a little bit more about them and that's the journalist in me that loves to talk to people in that way it's learning why they are the way they are what their passion is um etc so that for me is the most exciting thing at being at the track it's not only the atmosphere of the fans and just being there and hearing the cars and seeing them in person but it's those genuine yeah. interactions 
Yeah, they're they're fun. The the uh, goal we had the morning of uh, the Mid Ohio race is two weeks prior to that. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with Michael Andretti at Road America as we were guests there for one of his drivers, James Rowe, who's a friend of ours here at the podcast. And all of a sudden, I get an announcement that Marco is driving at Mid Ohio in the Group One Thousand One car, right? And I was like, dude. It would be cool to see him. Well, then Chris, who's on our team, who you, who you met, was like, hey, check out this video of F1. And uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Chris, you want to chime in? Tell me the guy's name, whose video it was that you – he's a huge fan. He keeps saying his name, and I'm like, okay, whatever. I have no idea, but I'm glad Chris does. Who Who is the creator? Yeah, so he's a YouTuber. Peter McKinnon is his name. So they, yep. went, out to, okay. they went out to a Formula One race, and uh, their goal was to basically meet um, their favorite drivers, if yeah. possible. Yeah, so then Chris nice. was like, you should do that. You should set a goal to meet Marco Andretti. I was like, okay, yeah, that would be a cool storyline. Why not, right? I talked, about it. I talked to his dad a couple weeks ago. Let's do it and see what happens. Uh, it happened. It didn't happen ideally the way that we wanted it to. Uh, he was on his way to the bathroom, and I was like, hey, can I get a video? And he popped over, and he's like, I was like, no, it's a video. <laughs> he went and turned and left, and I was like, ah. Oh, Okay, I guess that kind of. I'm gonna check it off the list. I don't know if that's really how it went. I did have later on. I did have the uh, fortune of speaking to him a little bit, but it's totally, totally cool to be able to know that genuine, normal people, yourself and myself, are able to have a great perspective and a respect for the drivers, the series, um, NASCAR as a company and as an organization. And if you Keep that respect up. Follow the guidelines. Make sure you're registered and everything. Um, it's possible for you to create content that allows you to have access to these guys in a respectable manner and women in a respectable manner. Um, it's unbelievably amazing. And it's amazing to see your part in it as well as a creator, um, as a podcaster as well. Um, one question I have for you is it's really early yet. For Black Top Banner, to me anyways, but it's really early yet for Above the Yellow Line as well. What are some of your hopes or one hope that you have for Above the Yellow Line and uh, one of the effects of it? I think for me, it's just expanding our coverage. We focus on the Cup Series. Um, that's the main purpose of the show. But during our live streams, we even talk about Truck and Xfinity. And I would love to at some point be able to have enough time and enough of a backing to be able to cover the major series of NASCAR comfortably. Uh, so that's something that I would hope to have for the future. And even to just being able to work with my team who are like my best friends in the world, being able to work with them on this platform as well and just keep growing it and expanding its audience and its reach. What would be one thing that you would want the listeners to know and like, it, it, there's some things here, right, but once in a while. People, you know, we thankfully enough, we have enough people that are very grateful that Blacktop Banner exists and that it exists within the asphalt space. We're not sure if anything would exist if it didn't. Um, and to me, uh, the one thing that I always want them to know is that, yes, it looks like we're having a blast, and we are most of the time, but it is work. Like, it, it is work and mm -hmm. this thing to put together. I was curious if there's one thing you would want your listeners to know about Above the Yellow Line. I think for me, oh gosh, there's a few things, but I, I guess if I could pinpoint it, it would be, you know, this brand, I don't have somebody writing the scripts for me. I don't have somebody editing for me. I don't have somebody, it, I do it myself. And I've been fortunate to have the help of Rob Branding in particular, who's made my logo and things like that. But everything comes from one person. And sometimes that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to edit as well. Uh, so for me, it's just understanding that the content that I put out is self-created. It's not put together by yeah. an entire team, but it's myself. And that's really big. And I think too, if I could break the rules and add one other thing as well, it would yeah, be, please. yeah, it, I mean, it would be, I get so many DMs of people asking, you know, I want to start a show. I want to do something like, what do I do? What is your advice? And I'm like, start. I started with my phone. Yeah. Like you're not going to know when you're not yep. going to find your passion and what you want to do until you just begin and you'll figure things out as, along the way. Uh, but it's just start creating content. You'll find your niche. You'll find what you're passionate about covering. You'll find your style as a creator. And that's always fun to figure out, but it's, you have to start somewhere. So start now. 
is what I tell everybody. That's a wonderful piece of advice. I'll share a quick story with you uh, to kind of piggyback off of that. I was on a flight from Boston to try to get back to Madison, but I didn't make it. I made it to Detroit and had to stay overnight. And when I stayed overnight, um, the person who was in front of me, um, we started to have a conversation on the, pl- on the plane, but obviously you can't have a great conversation from behind somebody when they're in front of you <laughs> on the plane. But we both got stuck there, and we were able to have a conversation. This young lady had uh, it, taken up the hobby of making balloon sculptures, not like balloon animals, oh. but like huge balloon sculptures, right, for huge events and stuff. And she's like, I just fell in love with it. And then I started posting pictures of it. And now uh, I leave from Detroit to go to Phoenix, Arizona, to the World Balloon Creators Conference or something like that. And she's like, I got invited to, like, make these balloon sculptures for the whole world that is the balloon creating sculpture community world. She's like, I never thought I would ever be doing something this amazing. I'm like, yeah, I want to go. I want to go with a blow dart gun, but I do want to go. Like, I do want to see these things because it would be fantastic. But it just goes to show, like, you know, to what what you're speaking to. Uh, Just do it. Just start. And you find your you find the rhythm and the path along the way. And it's it's really cool to kind of see. Thankfully, um, you know, us becoming friends and acquainted. We get to witness your journey, Taylor. And it's fantastic to be able to kind of see um, you start to figure that out along along the way and what you're going to make it into. We have great confidence in, in what you're doing and the content there as well. Um, we really want to thank you for coming on the show and spending some time with us. Uh, we did kind of get to step on the blacktop a little bit and whatnot at Mid-Ohio. Um, of course, we always love talking about the pavement and the patching and the concrete and that type of stuff. So to be able to share that with you in Ohio was fantastic. We really hope to be able to share that with you again in the future. Um, where to next? Where are you going to be heading next? Do you have anything on the agenda or on the schedule yet? Yeah, so I literally got the email today, uh, media credentials approved for Michigan International Speedway. So I'll be there covering the ARCA and the uh, Cup Race, uh, ARCA Xfinity Sweet. and Cup. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm Dang ready to go. You. There's going to be a pile of content. We can't wait to oh, see yes. it over here at Blacktop <laughs> Banner as well. Where can people find uh, yourself, if you wish, and Above the Yellow Line on social media? Yeah, so you can find me on uh, Twitter and TikTok. It's at underscore Taylor Kitchen underscore, and then at Above the Yellow Line on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Threads. Threads, yeah, we've been on there. We're kind of communicating on there a little bit. Yeah, I'm not as <laughs> bought in yet, but you know, I'm out there. I'll dabble a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. For for myself and for Taylor at Above the Yellow Line, this is Blacktop Banter. And I think this falls under the category of us speaking asphalt. So once again, we speak asphalt. Peace. Hey there, Blacktop Banner fans. This is Hayden. I am the co-founder of Spot On Sight. Uh, We're asphalt contractors ourselves. We run an asphalt paving company based out of Denver, Colorado. We know this is a game-changing app that will help you measure and mark your locations and your parking lots document using time-stamped photos, videos, and comments, and send professional-looking reports to your customers. We have a free 14-day trial on spotonsiteapp.com. Hey, Jessica Lombardo with Pavex, the pavement experience, and I want to invite you all to join us in San Antonio for the first ever event. It will be held January 30th through February 1st at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. We are going to have a live equipment demonstration over two days, 60 hours of educational programming, and a full trade show floor with over 75 manufacturers of equipment in the paving and pavement maintenance space. So Please join us there, and to learn more and get yourself registered, visit www.pavexshow.com. When it comes to asphalt tools and supplies, Liberty Supply has darn near everything you need. I actually think the owner, Sam, sleeps on a mountain of spray tips in their warehouse, alongside the pour pots, hot pots, steel brooms, chalk lines, flagging tape, and hundreds of other items. If you call Sam today at 800-397-9907, or visit libertysupply.biz, they'll get you set up with everything you need. For custom and multi-piece stencils, I always turn to Stencil Plus. They've supplied every stencil we use, and these things last a long time. 
actually, I should probably call Jeff over at Stencil Plus and just say hi, because it's been a long time since I've had to place an order. Anyway, if you want long lasting, high quality stencils, head over to stencilplus.com and save 10% by using code BB10 during checkout.